This is your End Time Prophecy Update with W. Dean Shook. Welcome to today's Prophecy News Update. I'm your host, W. Dean Shook. And as usual, I'm going to start this update with news you will not hear on the Alphabet Networks. And this is definitely one of them. As I have to report, the largest massacre of Christians in Syria that's being ignored. And here's what it says. The worst Christian massacre, complete with mass graves, tortured to death women and children, and destroyed churches that recently took place in Syria, took place at the hands of the U.S.-supported jihadi rebels. And the U.S. government and its mainstream mouthpiece are, as usual, silent about it. The massacre took place in Sadad. It's an ancient Orthodox Christian habitation, so old as to be mentioned in the Old Testament. Most of the region's inhabitants are poor, and Sadad is situated in the remote parts of the desert between Homs and Damascus. In late October, the U.S.-supported opposition invaded and occupied Sadad for over a week till they were ousted by the nation's military. Among other atrocities, 45 Christians, including women and children, were killed, several tortured to death. Sadat's 14 churches, some ancient, were ransacked and destroyed. The bodies of six people from one family, ranging from age 16 to 90, were found at the bottom of a well which is an increasingly common fate for quote-unquote subhuman Christians. The jihadists even made a graphic video with English subtitles of those whom they were massacring, while shouting Islam's victory cry, Allah Akbar, which John McCain claims is the same as thank God. Another video, made after Sadat was liberated, shows more graphic atrocities. What happened in Sadad is the most serious and biggest massacre of Christians in Syria in the past two and a half years. Forty-five innocent civilians were martyred for no reason, and among them several women and children, many thrown into mass graves. Other civilians were threatened and terrorized. Thirty were wounded. Ten are still missing. 1,500 families were held as hostages in human shields, among them children, the elderly, the young, men and women. All the houses of Sadad were robbed and property looted. The churches are damaged and desecrated, deprived of old books and precious furniture. What happened in Sadat is the greatest massacre of Christians in Syria. Get this full story and more on the website, wdeanshook.com. And we also have in a related story, a court house is lying about details of the nuclear deal. Iranian officials say the White House is misleading the public about the details of an interim nuclear agreement reached over the weekend in Geneva. Iran and Western nations, including the United States, came to an agreement on the framework for an interim deal late Saturday night in Geneva. The deal has yet to be implemented. Now, the White House has released a multi-page fact sheet containing details on the Iranian foreign officials. Tuesday rejected the White House's version of the deal as invalid, and it accused Washington of releasing a factually inaccurate primer that misleads the American public. They say what has been released by the website of the White House as a fact sheet is one-sided. It's an interpretation of the agreed text in Geneva, and some of the explanation and interpretation of the words in the sheet could contradict the text of the Joint Plan of Action. This fact sheet has unfortunately been translated and released in the name of the Geneva Agreement by certain media, which is not true. Iran's foreign minister told the Iranian press on Tuesday that the White House has modified key details 
of the deal that they released their own version of the agreement of this fact sheet. Iran says that Iran's right to enrich uranium, the key component in a nuclear weapon, is fully recognized under the draft released by Tehran. This comprehensive solution would enable Iran, Iran to fully enjoy its right to nuclear energy for peaceful purposes under the relevant articles in conformity with its obligations therein, the agreement reads. This comprehensive solution would involve a mutually defined enrichment program with practical limits and transparency measures to ensure the peaceful use of the program. Well, the Iranian draft reads, this comprehensive solution would constitute an integrated whole where nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. Iran's objection to the deal, as presented in the fact sheet, raises new concerns about final stage talks meant to ensure that the deal is implemented in the next few weeks. The White House confirmed to the Washington Beacon on Monday that the final details of this plan have yet to be worked out, meaning that Iran is not yet beholden to a six-month freeze of its nuclear activities. Technical details to implement the joint plan of action must be finalized before the terms of the plan begin. The White House would not provide additional details on the framework when approached by the Free Beacon on Tuesday. Are you surprised by that? I'm certainly not. And here's a related story. There's an estimate that's coming out of Israel that Iran could produce a nuclear weapon within 36 days. 36 days. This comes out of the Marif, which is an Israeli news reporting agency. It says it could be armed with a nuclear weapon within just over a month. The report was forwarded to diplomats and international experts this week. Israel experts have estimated that Tehran's schedule for nuclear enrichment has only been delayed for up to two weeks, according to the report. Less than one week after a deal has been reached between Western powers and the Iranian government regarding its nuclear program. The estimate may confirm Netanyahu's condemnation of the deal, which is an interim agreement which lifts economic sanctions for a slowing but not stopping of Iran's nuclear production. Benjamin Netanyahu calls this a historic mistake. And that's why the concern is that Iran will wait for an international crisis or an internal crisis in the United States as a prime opportunity to produce a nuclear bomb. The deal provides international support for Iran's nuclear program by allowing it to continue in any capacity, thus making the global community powerless to stop a nuclear Iran on legal grounds. The report states that Iran is likely to fire up their eight 15,000 centrifuges and produce a nuclear bomb in the event that the Islamic Republic sees the golden opportunity to do so. Deal or no deal. They say a nuclear warhead could be ready in as little as 36 days. Now, according to the agreement, Iran will be forced to dilute about half of its uranium below the 20% enrichment rate, leaving the second half intact. The agreement also allows Iran to continue enriching the unenriched uranium left in their possession, about 8 tons, to the rate of 3.5%. Hmm. And apparently, the deception continues. So when it comes to our environment, when it comes to the polar shift that we sometimes talk about, where the uh, North and South Poles are starting to flip we have a very interesting story about some earth changes that i want to share some of you may have already heard about this seven volcanoes in six different countries all start erupting within hours of each other a new island has appeared in the pacific a submarine uh, ejection off of uh, nishinoshima 
That's an island in Japan has erupted for the first time in 40 years. The Japanese Navy noticed the explosion of boiling uh, lava when it met seawater. Almost 7,000 miles away in Mexico, the Colima volcano blew its top after a period of relative calm. A steam of ash cloud rose to two miles in the sky. In Guatemala, Fire Mountain belched out lava and sent up a moderate ash cloud, causing an ash fall over nearby towns. The explosion and shock waves were occurring in the volcano can be felt by residents over six miles away. Doors and windows reported to be rattling. There were no damages so far. In Italy, Mount Etna's putting on quite a display. The current eruption, they say, is... Uh, from just a few days ago, it's been getting stronger as it moves on in time. A massive eruption lit up the sky. It distributed uh, um, ash and lava disturbing residents. The ash cloud was high enough to make uh, some flights be canceled. The lava flow was the biggest in years. The town of Zafanara, which lay in the path of some of the damage, laid out diverters, lava diverters, so the uh, town would not be overcome by the flowing lava. So when it comes to uh, our earth changing, our environment is changing. You know, when you go to the website and you read this full story, you're going to find the implications of the climate change that comes from one or two volcanoes. What's going to happen with all of these volcanoes. Well, here at End Time Prophecy News, we always do our part. End Time Prophecy News is the only program on the air that runs on recycled chickweed ethanol, working to save the planet every day. You can get these full stories and more at wdeanshook.com. That's wdeanshook.com. Dot com.